from the records of Scotland Yard, London, 1885. Name, Alice Alquist. Address, 9 Thornton Square. Cause of death, strangulation by person or persons unknown. After exhaustive investigation, the commissioner reluctantly orders the case closed, pending the possible disclosure of new evidence. It's many years later, and memories of Alice Alquist and 9 Thornton Square are all but forgotten. On the shores of Lake Como in Italy, a young bride and her husband are on the terrace of their villa, gazing enraptured at the beauty of the early morning. I shouldn't have awakened you, Paula, darling, but it's such a wonderful morning. Thank you for waking me, Gregory. Oh, you know, I was dreaming. Dreaming of our life together. How did you see it, Paula? I saw all the places where we'd be together, lovely places like this. I was thinking of our life, too. Only I heard it in music. Something alive with happiness, with all the feeling of the early morning. This morning? Yes, with the sun rising, light in your hair as it is now. When will you write it, darling? Oh, someday, when we've settled down. Where? Where would you like? Oh, Paris, perhaps. Paris? Mm-hmm. What about Rome? Or oh, London? How do you feel about London? London? Oh, <laughs> Paula, if you won't laugh, I'd like to tell you something. I won't laugh. <laughs> it's silly, but I was in London once in the winter. A poor, unsuccessful composer. It seemed to me no city in the world could be colder to the homeless or warmer to the ones who had a home. Oh, my darling. <laughs> I used to long for one of those quiet little houses in a square with a woman I should one day come to love. Paula, could we, could we settle down in London? Wouldn't have to be a house in a square. Perhaps... Paula, why do you look like that? There is a house in a square. What house? Nine Thornton Square. She left it to me. She? Oh, oh, you mean your aunt Alice Alquist? Yes, I'd lived with her ever since I was a baby. Then after it happened, I came here. I've been in Italy ever since, and that house comes into my dreams sometimes. But I haven't dreamed of it since I've known you. I haven't been afraid since I've known you. Oh, Paula, if it were true, it would make me very happy. It is true. I've found peace in loving you. I could face even that house with you. Oh, no, no, Paula, beloved. Yes. I would not ask that of you. Yes, you shall have your wish, darling. We'll go there. There's a lawyer who looked after the estate, a Mr. Mufflin. I'll write him today. You shall have your house. A house in London, a little square. I live just across the square, number 16. Oh, yes. Yeah, how do you do? Uh, Paula, dear, we mustn't keep Mr. Muffin waiting at the door. You're coming, darling. I'm sorry. Uh, don't tell me you're coming to live here again. Yes, my husband Please, and I... Please, dear. I'll call on you directly you're settled. Yes. Goodbye for the present. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm so glad we are to be neighbors. I'm sure you'll find everything in the house in order, Mrs. Anton. Uh, well, here are the keys. Now, if there's anything further I can do... You've been most kind. Oh, uh, about your income, Mrs. Anton... Shall we send the monthly draft here or to a bank? Well, Gregory, uh... Well, uh, I would think here, darling, at least temporarily. Send to here, if you please. Certainly. Just one more matter, and then I'll be going. You inquired about servants. Oh, yes. I'll send in a housekeeper tomorrow. She's very capable, but a little hard of hearing. Hard of hearing? Of course, if you'd rather... Write... No, 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 send her in. We can interview her, at least. Her name is Elizabeth Morgan. I'm afraid I haven't yet found a housemate. Oh, please, don't think about it. We're deeply grateful for all you've done. Thank you. And need I say that I hope you'll both be very happy... Good day. Good, Good day. day. <clears throat> well, this is our house, Gregory. Shall we go in? Amazing how well you remember everything. Uh, Paula, uh, what room is this? The drawing room. Well, come, dear. Aren't you going to show it to me? Will you light the gas, please? Hmm? Oh, the gas. There. That's better. Paula, what a handsome room. Mm, but to, to see it like this... All the furniture covered up and so... so quiet. There was always parties in this room and flowers. There are always flowers. Mm, those must have been wonderful days. It's so dead in here now. The, the whole place seems to smell of death. I'll open the window. There. I'll be fresh again in a moment. Oh, what is this, dear? This glass case. Oh, that's where she kept all her little treasures. All the things she collected on her concert tours. She was so proud of them. The glass is broken. It was broken that night. All the things were disarranged, but there was nothing missing. Oh, I know all these by heart. This glove... Oh, oh, be careful, darling. The glass. She wore this glove in Romeo and Juliet. 
A command performance in Covent Garden. One little glove. I used to ask her what happened to the other, but she'd only laugh and say she'd given it to a very great admirer. <laughs> she would never tell me who. I wish I could have seen her. You can see her. On the wall. Her portrait. Paula, it's unbelievable. How much you look like her. Only you are still more beautiful. She's painted there as Empress Theodora. That was her greatest role. When she sang it in St. Petersburg, the Tsar came to every performance. It, it was here that I found her. That night, here in front of the fire. And her own portrait. Darling. I, I was in bed when something woke me. I came running down the stairs, frightened as if I already knew what had happened. She had been strangled. Her, her lovely face was all... No, I can't stay. I can't stay oh, here. Oh, Paula, Paula, that's all past. It's long ago. You must forget about oh, it. Oh, Gregory, your arms so strong and safe. Hmm. All those things that remind you so of her, we will put them away. Yes. We'll make it a new house mm -hmm. with beautiful new things for a beautiful new life. Yes, darling, yes. And then later we'll, we'll have people, people here and parties again. Hmm? Wouldn't you like that? Oh, of course, dear. But later... First, let us have another honeymoon here by ourselves, just for a little while. Oh, yes, I only Now, thought... what do you suppose all this could be stored away? Oh, there is an attic under the roof. Her trunks are there and all her costumes. Well, then, that's where it shall go. Yes. And then we'll board it up. Board it up, So you'll yeah. never have to see them again. Oh, a piano. It's too much better. Hmm, fine instrument. The action needs regulating, but the tone is still quite good. That, that song. Why are you playing that song? Why not? That was her song. It was always her last encore at any concert. She said, oh, look, Gregor, here's an old letter. Letter? I beg of you to see me just once more. I followed you to London. Oh, the date. It was written just two days before she was murdered ten years ago. Where did you find that? It was here among this music, Nancy. It's from someone called Sergius Bauer. Give it to me. Gregory. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to snatch it. It's just that... But um, why should a letter upset you so? It isn't that. I'm upset for you, darling. All these things remind you of her. Oh, my dearest. Well, you're afraid of anything that cannot be any real happiness for us. You must forget her. No. Not her, Gregory. Only what happened to her. Of course, darling. Of course. <laughs> I'd like to see you, please. Elizabeth. Yes, sir. Elizabeth, you've been with Mrs. Anton and me now for two months. Are you happy here? Oh, indeed, sir. Good. Uh, you've been to market? Yes, Mr. Anton. While you were gone, I've been interviewing a housemaid. Is she hired, sir? Uh, I'm not through talking to her. She's in the kitchen. You may tell her to come in now. Yes, sir. Now, wait a moment. Outside just now, didn't I see you talking to our neighbor, Miss uh, Thwaites? Oh, yes, sir. She seemed so anxious to call here, sir. What did you tell her? You, you told me that seeing people is not good for Mrs. Anton. I asked you a question. Of course, sir. I told Miss Thwaites that the mistress hadn't been feeling too well lately and perhaps she should wait. Thank you, Elizabeth. You may send the girl in now. And, uh, might I ask about wages, sir? Sixteen pounds a year. Is that satisfactory? Mm, yes, sir. Um, what about her? Her? Elizabeth, the housekeeper. She looks strict-like. Did you see the way she looked at me? Well, perhaps it's the dress you're wearing. It is a little, shall we say, loud. I hope you're not a flighty girl, Nancy. I don't think so, sir. Do I have to share a room with her? No, if you prefer, you may have a room downstairs. Now, remember, your mistress is very particular about everything being correct. Is she, sir? Oh, Paula. Paula, dear. Uh, this is Nancy, our new housemaid. Yes, how do you do? You may go now, Nancy. Very good, sir. Well, she seems a nice girl, Paula. Yes, I am um, sure she'll do. Are you ready, dear? All ready. All ready to have my wife show me a wonderful city of London. Let me to get you. <laughs> You're like a summer's day. <laughs> oh, it's because I'm so happy. <laughs> you know what that is? Oh, yes. Three months ago today, we became man and wife. Oh, I have a little present for you, Paula. Here. Oh, Gregory. Where did you ever find anything so beautiful? Oh, it's just a cameo boat that belonged to my mother. And now it belongs to you. Oh, I shall wear it always, always. How sweet of you to give me this. No, oh. What's the matter? The clasp. Oh, darling, I've broken the clasp. No, I'll have it mended. It just seemed to break off. Your bag? Yes. Here, let me put it in your bag. You might lose it. You know, you are inclined to lose things, Paula. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that. Oh, just, just little things. There now, the brooch is in your bag for safekeeping. Now, 
You'll remember where it is. Of course, I'll remember. <laughs> I was only teasing, darling. <laughs> now, uh, where shall we go first? Well, I have it all planned. St. Paul's Cathedral, then Buckingham Palace, and then the Tower of Are London. Are you sure you feel equal to such a schedule? Oh, I feel perfectly well, really, I do. Oh, you said that because you know how it worries me. Well, just promise you won't overtax your strength. Promise me? Of course I shall. Come, then. We'll take it easy. We must not rush. Do you mind terribly, Gregory, but I just had to get out in the fresh air again. All those horrible things in there in the tower, the torture chambers, the beheading... Are class. you sure that's why you wanted to leave? Oh, yes. That yes. young man back there, he nodded to you. Who was he, Bola? Oh, I don't know. He seemed to know me, but well, I... Do you usually bow to people you don't know? No, I suppose I'd met him somewhere. Are you telling me the truth? Of course. Why should I lie? You smile at him. I wonder why. Oh, I did it without thinking, Gregory. I don't know why I did it. Like the other things... What other things? Oh, nothing, darling. Only I've been noticing you're quite forgetful lately. Forgetful? Well, losing things and... Oh, now, please, don't look so concerned, dear. It's nothing. You get too tired and... Yes, that's probably what it is. I get tired. I'm tired. Now, Gregory, can we go home now? Oh, we still haven't seen the crown jewels. They're in that building up there. They are? How do you know? What did you say? I said, how do you know? You haven't been here before. The guy told us inside. Are you becoming suspicious, Paula, as well as absent-minded? No, of course not, Gregory. After we see the jewels, we'll go home. Oh, jewels are wonderful things, Paula. Yes, a man could sell his soul for jewels and find that he has made not too bad a bargain. Well, you were right, Paula. There is nothing more beautiful than London sunshine. And I had to spoil the day by bringing you home so early. Won't you lie down now mm -hmm. and rest for a while? Yes. Would you like me to stay with you? Not go out this evening? No, no, you go to your studio as usual. Gregory, can you really compose in that little room you've rented? Of course. I have a piano. That's all I really need. I wish you'd let me see it sometime. Oh, uh, Paula, uh, you might let me have your brooch so I can have it repaired. Yes, yes, of course. I'll get it for you. Right now. Well, I don't understand this. Hmm? But... What's the matter? But, oh, Gregory, I... I can't find it. What? Well, I... It must be here in my bag. I, no, I'll turn everything out just right there. I, I know it was here. I couldn't have lost it. It must be him. Sure it is. No. No, it's gone. Gregory, it's gone. Oh, Paula. Didn't oh. I tell you? But, How did you come to lose it? I, I must have pulled it out with something. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Gregory. Please forgive me. Oh, my dear, it's not as serious as that. It was not valuable. No, but your present to me, your mother's brooch, I... I don't remember opening my bag. You, you did put it there, didn't you? Well, don't you even remember that? Yes, yes, of course I do. But suddenly I'm beginning not to trust my memory at all. Oh, no, I tell you, you're just tired, that's all. Don't worry so, Paula. Don't worry. You rang for me, ma'am? Uh, what time is it, Elizabeth? Close to nine o'clock, ma'am. How do you feel? I'm all right. You look fine to me, Mrs. Anton. Uh, has the master left yet? Yes, ma'am. A little while ago. Please see that he has plenty of coal on the grate in his room, won't you? You already told me, ma'am. When did I tell you? After dinner. Don't you remember? Oh, oh, oh yes. yes. Uh, Elizabeth? Yes, ma'am? Uh, did you just turn the gas up in the hall? Why, no, Mrs. Anton. Oh, the light here in the room, it just went down. The, the way it always does when another light is turned up. I didn't touch it. Oh, but this one went down. No, oh, perhaps Nancy lit another jet in the kitchen. It couldn't have been her. This is her evening off. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, ma'am. Elizabeth? Yes, ma'am? What's that? That noise. Listen. Noise, ma'am? Yes, can't you hear? It's coming from up there, from the attic. Like footsteps and... Things being moved around. But, ma'am, the attic's all boarded up. But I tell you, I hear something. Elizabeth! My hearing, ma'am, it's not too good, you know. Oh, you hear very well when I speak to you. Yes, ma'am, I've gotten so I can tell from a person's lips what they're saying. Shh. It's stopped now. Yes, it's gone. Well, I... You may go, Elizabeth. I'm very sorry. Please, ma'am, is there anything I can do? No, nothing, nothing. Good night. Good night. I hope you rest, ma'am. What is happening to me? I must be ill. I must be... Oh, no, 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 no. 
In the few days that have passed, the sedate little community called Thornton Square has seen a new visitor, a discreet young man with innocent questions, but who, for some reason, has avoided the residence of Mr. and Mrs. Gregory Anton. At the moment, the young man is in the office of the superintendent of Scotland Yard. Now, look here, Cameron. The Alquist case is ancient history. What's causing your sudden interest in a murder that happened ten years ago? Oh, it's hard to say, sir. It impressed me very much at the time, probably because I'd met Alice Alquist. Oh? I was just a boy. I know it sounds foolish, but I still think she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. Do you wonder why I was startled when I saw that girl last week in London Tower? The girl who might be the twin sister of Alice Alquist 15 years ago? And what does that prove? <laughs> Nothing, I'm afraid. But number nine Thornton Square is no longer an empty house. The girl's her niece. The house belongs to her. Well, it's just a feeling I have that something peculiar is going on. Because that nosy old maid, Miss Thwaites, because she thinks so. Oh, come now, Cameron. Yes, I'm afraid Miss Thwaites' suspicions are somewhat distorted by her frustrated ambitions to go calling on the Antons. But they've been very careful to avoid visitors. I wonder why. Well, stop wondering. We gave up the case as hopeless. As for the matter of jewels, that was dropped by the order of a most important personage. Jewels? What jewels? Oh, they'd been given to Alice Alquist by, well, by someone very highly placed. Crown jewels of his, well, of another country, they disappeared. That's why she was murdered. Who'd murder a woman for jewels that are far too famous to dispose of? But they've never turned up. No, now run along, Brian. I'm very busy. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, uh, Williams. Uh, yes, sir? Uh, where's your duty these days, Williams? Uh, still in the East End, sir. How do you like a more fashionable beat? One that includes Thornton Square. Oh, very much, sir. It also includes a pretty young housemaid named Nancy Frost. She might be susceptible to a policeman's uniform, and uh, I need information. Well, now, sir, I'll say uh... nothing about it. We'll see what can be done. If you want coal on the fire, Paula, why don't you ring for the maid? I'm sorry, Gregory. I didn't mean to wake you. Oh, well, now that you have interrupted my nap... We may as well be comfortable. Now, please, pull the bell cord. Oh, but it seems so unnecessary. What are servants for, Paula? Answer me. What do you suppose servants are for? To do things to, to serve us, I suppose. Exactly. It's only I think we should consider them a little. Oh, don't be cross with me. I'm not cross with you. Oh, there are a lot of things. You rang, sir? No, your mistress rang. Well, my dear, tell Nancy why you rang her for. A little coal on the fire, please, Nancy. Yes. Well, Nancy, tonight is your night out, isn't it? That's right, sir. Whom are you seeing tonight, Nancy? They have changed the policeman on the beat. Is his heart going to be added to the list of those you've broken? I don't know I've broken any, sir. Oh, no, no, I'm sure that's not true. That complexion of yours, that's something not quite true also. Oh, you do it very cleverly. In fact, I'm hoping you'll pass your secret on to your mistress and help her get rid of her pallor. Sure, I'd be pleased to do anything I can, sir. Gregory, how can you talk to Nancy like that? But, my dear, you're so anxious to regard the serpents as your equals, I thought I would treat her as no one. No wonder that girl despises me, the way you encourage her in it. Despises her? Her whole manner, the way she looks at me. Looks at you? Paula, you're not imagining things again. You're not, are you? Of course I'm not. Paula, don't turn away. You must have this out. You really think Nancy despises you? Paula... No, Gregory. Well, I'm glad of that. It hurts me when you're ill and fanciful. I beg your pardon. Nancy, have you been there listening to us? Oh, no, sir. Miss Waits is calling. She wants to know if the mistress is at home. Oh, that old busybody again? She has a nephew with her, a Mr. Cameron. Uh, tell them Mrs. Anton is not at home. Gregory, really, she's been oh, so Oh, if very... you let her in once, you'll always have to have her. And I do not want people all over this house. Well, don't stand there, Nancy. I would have liked to have seen her. You, but, my dear, I thought you were only trying to be polite. Why didn't you say you really wanted to see her? I, how could I? I in front of that girl, oh, I... Paula, you must get over this ridiculous fear of the servants. All you had to say was, show her in, Nancy. Well, am I right? Yes, Gregory. <laughs> you wouldn't have had time to see her anyway. Why not? You'll want to dress. We're going out tonight. We are? Oh, you didn't tell me... That... Or have I forgotten? <laughs> oh, Paula, you silly child. Of course you haven't forgotten. Look, theater tickets. A surprise for you. We're going to the theater tonight. <laughs> oh, Gregory. Oh, 
wonderful. Oh, my darling. And you thought I was being cruel to you. No, no, you're not cruel. Keeping people away from you. Making you a prisoner. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, it's been days since I've heard you laugh like this. It's been days since I've been so happy. I want to laugh. I want to dance. <laughs> what is it, Gregory? The wall. Something is missing from the wall. Missing? Oh, Paula. Paula, I don't want to upset you. If you will put things right when I'm not looking, we'll assume it didn't happen. But, but what? You mean you don't know? No, I, I, I... The little picture's been taken down again. Who took it down? Why? Why, indeed. Why was it taken down before? Paula? But I haven't taken it. Why should I, Gregory? I swear... Oh, no, don't ring for the servants. I must. No, please, please. Oh, Gregory, don't shame me before the servants again. Will you stop being hysterical? You must get to the bottom of this once and for all. Things like this cannot... Oh, Elizabeth, uh, come in. Yes, sir? Uh, Elizabeth, do you notice anything missing from this room? Missing? No, I don't think so, sir. Look at the wall. Well? Oh, yes. The little picture. Did you take it away? Oh, no, sir. Why ever should I? You go to church. Don't you, Elizabeth? Why, yes, sir. Please hand me my Bible there. The Bible? Yes, sir. Thank you. You will kiss this Bible as a solemn oath that you've been telling us the truth. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now, send Nancy in here. Yes, No, sir. Gregory, please. No, no, not that girl. I'll say anything. I'll say that I did it. I did it, Gregory. Please, I cannot have that girl in here. Please, I Paula, can't. Paula, please have the goodness to control yourself. <laughs> now, you've thrown suspicion on the servants. They must be cleared of it. Now, sit down. Did you hear? Sit down. Nancy, a picture has been removed from the wall there. I want to know if you took it. Oh, no, sir. Shall I ask Nancy to kiss the Bible, Paula, or will you accept her word? Of course I'll accept it. That's all, Nancy. Thank you. It was there this morning, I'm sure. Give me that Bible. Give it to me. I swear on the Bible I didn't take that picture down. Go and look for it. See if you can find it. Perhaps here in the library. We found it in here the last time, didn't we? But I... I think it may be here again. The shelf. It's there. On the shelf. So, you knew where it was all the time. No, I didn't, Gregory. I didn't. Well, I, I think you better go to your room. Then we... We're not going to the theater? Oh, I'm afraid you're far from well enough for the theater, my dear. Gregory, if... I took that picture down. If? If I do all these senseless, meaningless things, they're so meaningless, then I don't know what I do anymore. I know, Paula. That's just a trouble. Then if that is true, you must be gentle with me. Please, Gregory, please. You better go to your room. What are you going to do? I'm going out to work to try to forget all this. No, please don't leave me now. I get so frightened when you go out night after night. Frightened? You never told me that oh, before. I'm frightened of the house. I hear noises and footsteps. I imagine things. The, the light in my room, the light dims. I'm frightened of myself. No, Gregory, please take me in your arms. Please, please take me in your arms. Good night, Paula. <laughs> I hope to find you much better in the morning. Gregory. Well, Williams, come in. Uh, I just wanted to report, sir. Miss Nancy Frost and I, we're going out this evening. Oh, fine. Any luck this afternoon, sir? <clears throat> Not very much, I'm afraid. I persuaded Miss Thwaites to adopt me temporarily as her nephew and go visiting. But the Antons wouldn't see us. Too bad, sir. But meet her I shall. I've just called a friend of mine, Lady Dalroy. She's giving a musical at her home Friday night. She knew Mrs. Anton slightly years ago. She's been kind enough to add her name and her husband's to the list of guests. properly ashamed, arriving so late. Covered with remorse, Lady Delroy. Business at Scotland Yard, I suppose. Oh, my lady, not so loud. Tonight I'm just another guest. <laughs> well, you're in for a disappointment, Brian. A note came late this afternoon. Mr. and Mrs. Anton were unable to accept the invitation. Oh? Oh, I see. She's apparently ill. Very tiresome of her. Did she send the note? No, her husband. Brian, who is this Mr. Anton? What does he do? Where does he come from? I was hoping to find that out tonight. <laughs> oh, don't look so glum. Come into the music room. Saratsky is going to play for us. You still enjoy the piano, don't you? Brian. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I'm afraid my mind was miles away. Please answer me, Paula. 
Why are you all dressed up like this? Because I'm going to Lady Dalroy's reception. But I sent a note. Yes, you told me. But I'm quite well enough to go, and I must get out of this house, Gregory. Very well. But I'm afraid you'll have to go alone. If you prefer. Paula. No, no, Paula, wait. I didn't realize this party meant so much to you. I'll change immediately. You didn't really think I'd let you go alone, did you? I don't know. Please hurry then, Gregory. Of course, my dear. I won't be a moment. Wonderful surprise, Mrs. Anton. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you, Lady Dalroy. May I introduce my husband? How do you do? I hope you will forgive all the confusion, Lady Dalroy, but Paula suddenly felt much better, and we were so anxious to attend. But of course. Now, if you'll come in, Saratsky's playing. We'll find some seats over over there. Later on, we're serving a little supper. We'll have a nice long talk. Thank, Thank you, Lady Dalroy. Wrong? Wrong? You keep turning. No, no, it's nothing. I, I, I thought uh, I saw a man I knew, that's all. Imagine being able to play like that. Yes. Yes, I I heard Siretsky once in... Paula. Yes. Paula. Yes. My watch is gone. No. No, Gregory, no, I... I, I, didn't, I didn't... What are you doing? Your handbag. Oh, please, please. I can feel it in your handbag. My watch is in your handbag. Open it up. I didn't put it there. Oh, you see, I was right. You took it. I didn't put it there. I swear I didn't put it there. Oh, quiet, please. Paula, you must control yourself. Paula, <laughs> you're a scene like this in public. <laughs> come, come, we must get out of here immediately. Come along, come along, Paula, come. <laughs> I've tried so hard to keep it within these walls, in our own house. Now, because you would go out tonight, the whole of London knows it. If I could only understand what makes you do these crazy, twisted things. Gregory, are you trying to tell me that I'm insane? That's what I'm trying not to tell myself. But that's what you think, isn't it? That's what you've been hinting for months now, ever since... Well, ever since what? Since... Since the day I lost your mother's brooch. No, no, before that, the first day in this house when I found that letter. What letter? From that man called Bauer, Sergius Bauer, I remember. Yes, you're right. I can see you still, standing there and saying, Look, look at this letter, and staring at nothing. What? You had nothing in your hand. Oh, Gregory! I was staggered, but I didn't know then how much reason I had to be. What reason? I didn't know then about your mother. What about my mother? Your mother was mad. She died in an asylum when you were a baby. Oh, that's not true. I've been making inquiries. I've talked to the doctor who attended her. Would you like to see him? No. He described her symptoms to me. It began with her imagining things. Noises, footsteps, no. voices. And then the voices no. began to speak no. to her. And in the end, she died with no mind no, at all. stop it, stop it. No. Ah, perhaps you will understand why I cannot let you meet people. No. Oh, by the way, he must have been rather disappointed that you left Lady Dalroy's home tonight before he could talk to you. Oh. Who? The man. The man who was sitting behind us. You went there only because you knew he was going to be there. But Gregory, who? Who? The same man who bowed to you that day in the tower. Who is he? Someone from the past, perhaps? Some disappointed shooter? I never met him. I have no idea who he is. Why do you lie to me? I never lied to you. No, I'm sorry. I know. You never lied to me. It's worse than lying. You've forgotten. You've forgotten him as you forget everything. Oh, but I'm wrong to try to handle this myself. Paula, we shall have visitors here, and shortly. A doctor? Two. Yes, I believe two is the required number. Good night, Paula. I'm going out. It's a little later the same night. Gregory has just left, and alone in her room, Paula crouches in terror, staring up at the petals of flame that burn evenly in the chandelier. Then, from the attic above, she hears footsteps, and the muffled thud of unknown objects moved by an unknown hand. And the light in her room grows dimmer. Oh, oh no, I can't stand it, I can't. 
on the gas anywhere just now. I know, ma'am. I, I thought it went down in here as if... As oh, if... it's just that the gas comes in pipes, ma'am, and I expect they get more gas in the pipes sometimes than they do at other times. Yes, I suppose that could explain it. Now let me get your shoes off. Elizabeth, do you hear anything? Mrs. Anton? Those sounds, those noises up there. Oh, no, no, ma'am. Like someone moving about. Oh, Elizabeth, listen, please. You know what my hearing is, ma'am. But there just couldn't be anyone up there. The whole floor is boarded up. You know it is, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> I hear it, Elizabeth. I hear it. I hear it. Now, now, there, ma'am. I'll go and get you some nice hot... No, please, don't leave me. Don't leave me. <laughs> Williams, well, come in. Sorry to wake you up so early, sir, but seeing as how you told me to come here to your house, if anything... No, don't apologize. What is it? Well, about two hours ago, I'm on the corner of Thornton Square when suddenly there he is, popping up out of the fog, our friend Mr. Anton. I can't figure it out, sir. The way he disappears and then reappears every night. Well, don't let it amaze you any longer, Williams. Sir? He never leaves Thornton Square. We only thought he did. Number five is an empty house. He turns the corner of Thornton Square, comes back to number five through the alley, goes to the roof, crosses to his own house... Goes in through the attic. But why would a man want... Oh, uh, never mind now. What happened last night? Well, I tell you, that man's been up to something. Clothes untidy, cravat all on one side, dirt and dust all over him, even on his face. Had he been in a fight? No, more like he'd been digging in a cellar or something. Oh, sit down, Williams. I'll stir up some breakfast. Oh, I've had my breakfast, sir. In the kitchen at number nine, as a matter of fact. Oh? How's Nancy? It seems the master's told her her mistress might be going away for a long time. For a long time? What do you think that means? It means I've got to get into that house tonight. But Nancy says he's told her not to let her mistress see anyone. Then you'll have to see to it that Nancy isn't home tonight either. Any little thing I can do for the yard, sir. But how do you know the lady herself will see you? I don't know. Wait. There is a way. Yes, I'm sure she'll see me, Williams. Go away. I can't see anyone. I'm ill. Elizabeth, stop him. I must see you, Mrs. Anton. I couldn't stop him, ma'am. He pushed his way right in. Mrs. Anton, my name is Brian Cameron. You mustn't be here. Go away. Not until I've given you this. A glove? It's a glove. Years ago, Alice Alquist gave me this glove. I was a little boy, overcome with admiration. Will you trust me now? She gave it to you. <laughs> the great admirer she used to make such a mystery of, that little boy. Mrs. Anton... Are you planning to leave here? Leave? Oh, I have nowhere to go. Unless my husband sends me away. Is that why you are here to take me away? Are you as frightened as all that? Well, I'm sorry, but I, I... I can't talk to you. I'm afraid I'm... You're I'm... afraid you're going out of your mind? Well, I'm here to prove that you're not. Now, please. Where's your husband now? Where has he gone? He's taken a studio where he can work. At his composing, he says he can't work in this house. Is there anyone else here now except us and Elizabeth? No. Why? Because the gas light just dimmed a little. You saw that? Of course. Oh, then it really happens. I thought I imagined... It means that someone has turned a light on somewhere no, in this house. No, no. I've thought that too. But every night I've been all over the house and there's never been another light turned on. Oh, at last I can tell this to someone. Every night when my husband goes out... The gas light goes down? Yes. And then what? Then I think I hear things. I watch and wait and... And then later the gas goes up again. And he returns? Yes. Quite soon after, always quite soon. Are these things you hear, what things? Sounds, noises over my room in the attic. Uh, what's up there? A whole floor of trunks and furniture, her belongings, my aunt's. Like that sound just then? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes, but who... Mrs. Anton, you know, don't you? You know who's up there. No. No. How could he be? Why? Tell me, has he any weapons in the house? He has a revolver. Where is it? Well, there, I, I, I think he has it in his desk there. Uh, locked. I'll have to force it open. This letter opener will do it. No, 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 you mustn't. Whoever you are, you have no right to. He'll think that I... No, what shall I... What shall I say to you? You won't have to say anything. Well, 
A gun case without a gun. Perhaps it's a good thing I... Oh. What's the matter? There, in the drawer, the brooch he gave me and the letter. I was right. Letter? Yeah, it was from someone called Sergius Bauer. Bauer? I found it, but my husband said I dreamed it, and now it's here. Bauer? There was a Sergius Bauer connected with Alice Alquist, a young pianist who played for her in Prague. Let me see that letter. Handwriting. Yes, yes. Now something else, anything. Anything else he may have written. Oh, uh, this, this note. It's addressed to Lady Dalroy. Yes, he said he had to send Lady Dalroy an apology. Look, the handwriting, it's identical, Mrs. Anton. Your husband and Sergius Bauer are one and the same. He said there was no letter. He said I was going out of my mind. You're not going out of your mind. You're slowly and systematically being driven out of your mind. But why? Why? Perhaps because you found this letter and knew too much? Or because then he would have control of your property, of this house, and could search in the open instead of in the dark like this? Search? Search for what? For the things for which Alice Alquist was murdered. Her jewels. Well, I have her jewels. There are jewels you didn't know she had. Famous jewels. Jewels for which he was searching that night ten years ago. No, you're wrong. I know him. He's my husband. I've lived in the same house with him. If... If that were true, then from the beginning there would have been nothing. Nothing real from the beginning. I'm sorry, Mrs. Anton, but you must believe me. Your whole life depends upon what you're going to do now. Don't you see the way everything is... The gas. Gas is brighter again. How long has it been up? I... I don't know. You'd better go to your room, Mrs. Anton. Why? Why? Where are you going? I'll wait for him outside the house. He'll cross the roof to the empty house next door. When he comes out the servant's entrance in the back, I... I'll be waiting for him. What will you do? You have nothing to worry about, Mrs. Anton. Elizabeth? Yes, sir? Whatever happens tonight, Elizabeth, have her welfare in mind. You can count on me, sir. But what am I going to say to the master when he comes back? He won't come back anymore, Elizabeth. Hola. (gasps) Gregory. What are you doing here, Paula? I was lying down. In the drawing room? Why? I don't know. You don't know? Do you know anything about anything you do? Oh, you startled me. I I didn't hear you come in the door. I didn't come in the door. I came down the stairs. I've been in the attic, Paula. The attic is boarded up. You couldn't have... It's no longer boarded up. I have found what I've been looking for. Did you ever see jewels like these, Paula? Did you? Jewels. Oh, Joe. Do you know what you remind me of as you walk across the room? Like a girl walking in her sleep. But you're not asleep. You're awake. Fully awake. Or you would not have broken open my desk. I didn't open it. Why did you do it, Paula? I didn't. It was he. He opened it. He? What are you talking about? A man. A man who came to see me. Who let him in? Elizabeth. Elizabeth! Come here. Elizabeth. Did some... Mr. Ant? Come in here, Elizabeth. Who was the man who came here while I was out? A man. What man, sir? Come, come, Elizabeth. You must have answered the door. No one was here, sir. No one. Elizabeth, you saw him. You opened the door yourself. No, ma'am. I didn't see anyone at all. But it, he was... He was here. I, I know it. I, I, I saw him. You see how it is, Elizabeth? Yes, sir. I see just how it but is. But I, I couldn't have dreamed it. I couldn't have... No, did I dream? Did I really dream? Yes, Paula, you dream all day long. All that happened? All that did not happen. Oh, then it is true my mind is going. Haven't I told you, Paula? Take me away now. I can't fight it anymore. Yes, Paula, I will. Take me away. Take me away. And was I any part of this curious dream of yours, Mrs. Anton? You! Perhaps my presence may help you recall your dream. Who the devil are you? Only a figment of your wife's imagination. How did you get into this house? Down the attic stairs, Mr. Anton. The same way you did. Mrs. Anton, don't you think you'd better go to your room? You must be very tired. Don't you think you'd better explain your business? As a mere ghost existing only in your wife's mind, I could hardly be said to have any business. Paula, go to your room. No. Please, Mrs. Anton. All right, I'll go. Those jewels, I see you found them after all, Sir Just Bauer. I'm afraid I don't know your name. Cameron, shall I tell you my business address also? No, I think I can guess it. So we've both ended our search tonight. Where were the jewels? Sold in one of her costumes. The dress she wore in the Opera Theodora. How clever she was to conceal them there. Four priceless jewels among a lot of paste imitations. How does it feel, Bauer, to have planned and killed and tortured for something, then to find it's all been for nothing? For nothing? Oh, no. I don't think so. Not for nothing! Put down that gun! Yes. I heard a shot, and then he ran up the stairs, the master. He ran to the attic, ma'am, and the gentleman after him. They're up there now, they're fighting. Oh, I've got to get help, ma'am. But who? 
Oh, Mr. Williams, the constable, Mr. Williams. I'll fetch you, ma'am. Don't worry. I'll fetch him right away. You sure you're all right, Mr. Cameron, sir? I'll, I'll feel a little better as soon as I finish tying Mr. Barrow to this chair. There. Gregory? Mrs. Anton, you, you shouldn't have come up here. I want to speak to my husband. Do you believe me now? Please, I want to speak to him alone. I assure you I'm quite helpless, Mr. Cameron. Please. Come, Williams. We'll be waiting on the stairs. Voila. Go and see if he's listening. He's not listening. He told you a lot of things about me, didn't he? Yes. They were lies. Because he's in love with you. I can feel it. Can you? Can you really, Gregory? Or shall I call you Sergio? <laughs> oh, so, so he told you that too. Well, have you never heard of an artist taking a stage name? They don't hang a man for that, do they? No, they won't hang a man for that. Paula, Paula, do you remember our first days was together? Do you remember Italy? Le Como. There have been times when I thought I only dreamed those days. Come closer, Paula. Look into my eyes. Paula, if I ever meant anything to you, and I believe I did, then help me, Paula. Give me another chance. Gregory. Look, in the door of that cupboard there is a knife. Get it, Paula, and cut me free. Here? Yes, yes, yes. The first door. I'll find it, Gregory. Oh, be quick, Paula. Hurry. But there's no knife here. Huh? Yes, yes. I, I, I put it there tonight. Yes, that's it. Now, now bring it here. I have no knife, Gregory. What? You must have dreamed you put it there. Put it are you suggesting this is a knife in my hand? Huh? Have you gone mad, my husband? Paula! Or is it I who am mad? I'm always losing things, hiding things. Oh, that was a knife, wasn't it? And I threw it on the floor. I have lost. No, Paula, Paula, it's just there. Pick it up. I must look for it, mustn't I? If I don't find it, you'll put me in the madhouse. No. Now, where could it be now? Behind this trunk? No. No, no, perhaps over here. I'm trying to help you, aren't I? Trying to help you to escape. But how can a mad woman help her husband to escape? Paula, Paula, you're not mad. You're not. Yes, I am, as my mother was mad. No, 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 Paula, that wasn't true. Pick up the knife. Please help me. If I were not mad, I could have helped you. Whatever you had done, mm. I could have pitied you and protected you. But because I'm mad, I hate you. Because I'm mad, I betray you. And because I'm mad, I'm rejoicing in my heart without a shred of pity, without a shred of regret. Come, Mr. Cameron, take this man away. You're ready, Bauer? Quite ready. Untie his feet, Williams. I don't ask you to understand me, Paula. Between us all the time where the jewels, like a fire, a fire in my brain that separated us, those jewels which I wanted all my life, I, I don't know why. The cab is coming, Mr. Cameron. Goodbye, Paula. Goodbye, Gregory. I'll be down in a minute, Williams. Oh, this will be a long night. But it will end. In the morning when the sun rises, sometimes it's hard to believe there ever was a night. You, you'll find that too. I shall try. I shall try. <laughs> 